The first AI tool for academia and research you've not heard about is Neuralumi. Neuralumi, why that name? Anyway, the all-in-one AI platform for researchers, well, we'll be the judge of that. But uh, if you click in and you sort of like sign in, this is the sort of stuff it can produce for you. When you first log in, this is what it looks like. So you've got Neuralumi at the top, then you've got Search Paper, Spark, and Pulse. So you can choose between these two outputs. I chose Pulse, and then you can also, oh look, that's the last one I did. And you can also do Spark. This is Spark. All you have to do is enter your research question there. You've also got Research Assistant. Um, I don't really know what this does. I think you had a new workspace and you put papers in it. But um, yeah, you can just easily search. And look, this is what it generates. So research topic, this is what I wanted. OPV for indoor applications. And then down here, we've got read the full report. Summary, you've got all of the stuff sort of like written out for you. Um, and then you've got categories, organized references, analysis framework so you can go here to see what's done so it's really quite in depth but this is what we're really after is all the papers down here so you can see you get a relevant score and it's uh, initially organized by papers that are highly relevant to your research field and you can see the year the paper and the abstract so a really great way of finding all that information um, and then you can obviously just sort of like send it across to a workspace which I think this is what this research assistant links into but uh, overall this is a pretty good uh, free way of going to find all those references. Go check it out for yourself. And the other ones get pretty darn interesting too. Another tool that you should know about is Undermind. Condense weeks of research into minutes. Don't we like that, everyone? But when you log in, this is what it looks like. So, Undermine Research Assistants. Welcome. What are your research goals today? I'll ask one or two questions to clarify. So this is very much an AI agent where you say, I'm trying to find out this, and then it comes back to you with questions. So if I'm asking about OPV devices, so I just said OPV devices over here, it will think and it will say, great, what about all of these things? And then you've got to go in and you've got to sort of like answer all those questions. It can be a little bit confusing if you're not familiar with a research field. Undermined really goes deep very, very quickly. So if you're brand new to a research field, I think this is probably a little bit too much because you're reading through and you're like, hang on, what's this? Ah, D, A, Da, all polymer sit. Oh my god, I don't understand it. It's quite detailed. So, if you're new to a research field, stay away from this initially. Maybe they'll change that in the future. But if you're in a research field, you'll see the output is actually really, really great. Look at this. This is what I did for colorectal cancer microbiome studies. And this is the output you get. So, here you get all of the information. Now, one thing I like about this, let's full screen this, is that not only do you get it all kind of like broken down into this accordion like structure. Structure, you get tables, but this is one thing I've not seen before. Top references over time. Look at this, I love this. And then you hover over things, and if it's cited, it's got a red thing. So, oh, I don't know, I'm pointing at the screen. That doesn't help you, does it? And then this one, you can see here, this one is referenced by all of those papers in red. This one is referenced by none. This one's all of those. So you can get a really quick snapshot of really sort of like influential, highly cited papers visually. We like that, don't we? And then foundational work. So it really sort of like breaks down all of the important aspects of a literature review and trying to find different parts of the research field. It goes even deeper though. This isn't sponsored by the way. I just found this and I think you should know about it. Here we've got chat. So this chat is really really quite powerful where you can ask more about what it's kind of found in this area and all of the papers down here. So you can get a quick introduction, you can compare top findings, you click there and it gives you a nice little prompt and away it goes analyzing the references. So it's a really nice way of delving deeper into this if you so want to. Um, and it's, uh, you know, very much agentic. So it's thinking all of the time um, and then it will, you know, produce the result. Okay, we'll leave that thinking and then we'll look down here at the references. So here you can see you've got the topic match, you get the publication year and the citations per year, which is a really nice metric to have up there actually. And then uh, you get this reference and abstract here. So overall, here are all of the things that you need to know about organized by how relevant it is to your topic. And uh, yeah, you can go and try this for free. Here we are. So now it's finished its output. This is what it looks like. It's got a nice table. It's got tables. It's got tables. It's got tables. And uh, it is just a nice tool that you can try for free. So some people love it. Check out Undermind. Another tool that you should know about is Future House, automating scientific discovery. All right, 
thanks very much. And then let's find a bit more about their mission, because I quite like this. They're building an AI scientist and the mission here, our mission is building AI scientists or AI systems that automate scientific research and accelerate the pace of discovery so humanity can find cures for disease, solutions for climate change and other species accelerating technologies. Don't you want to be accelerated, you bloody species out there? Well, this is how they do it, but we're not interested in all of the details. Let's just go to the outputs. So if you go to this sort of like new Task. It was an AI for scientific discovery, and then you can select the model. Down here, you've got a load of models you can choose from. You've got Crow, you've got Falcon, you've got Phoenix and Owl, and then this one. I don't know what that one is. Um, and then models, a click down here, and you can see, you know, you've got a little bit more information about the different models and everything that's they're providing. But it is open source, it's not for profit. So let's have a look to see what happens. So I put in, in here the gut microbiome uh, uh, colorectal cancer question, and this is what it came up with. So it, it's not nicely formatted by any means. Uh, it's just like a big old wall of text. <laughs> But the text is quite small, and uh, yeah, let's zoom in on it. You know, it is quite small. It's not easy to read. They need to sort of really think about this user interface. But for free, um, I think it's great. And then down here, you can see that you've got all the references. You click on a reference, and you can go here to the clinical trials in that case. Or there's also some other ones. So clinical trials again. Let's see if we can get a paper. They do provide, here we are, the DOIs to go out, which is really great. So you can actually go and check all of these references for yourself. Here's the results, blah, blah, blah. What I don't like about this is they don't give you, oh, here we are, the references. Oh, I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> Okay, references. They do provide all the references, and you can see here they come up with 23. That's pretty good, 23. Uh, you know, does it, it doesn't sort of like rank them. It doesn't give me any sort of like, uh, you know, really detailed uh, analysis like something else like consensus or illicit would. But uh, you can see here we've got some ideas of what is clinical trials. This one's the highest quality in uh, gut, the uh, journal gut. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> All right then, yeah, and these are all of the things I would want to know about. So overall, you know, go in, play about with all of the different uh, searches. So Crow, Concise, you've got Deep Search, you've got Chemistry Task, which is experimental, or I like that. I like the fact that it's experimental. And uh, here we've got Owl as well, Precedent Search, formerly known as Has Anyone, good for understanding if anyone has ever done something in science. So go check out and play about with all of these because I think you'll have a bit of fun doing it. Another tool you should know about is inra.ai. And this is what it looks like when you sign in. Down the side here, you've got all of these things you can do. You can do a narrative literature review, you can do a systematic literature review, you can do a meta-analysis and a gap analysis. And it tells you approximately how long it takes to do each one. It is a really nice layout. And here you can type in your research question. You can even upload research papers if you found papers that you know you should work with. And then you can also add from Zotero soon. Oh, they've grayed that out to tease you. That's what's coming. And then you can begin your research. But this is what I did. OPV devices for indoor applications. And this is what it generates. Look, it actually generates a little peer-reviewed paper for you. So here we've got a review that dresses the gap. Here's the abstract, here's the methods, the key content and findings. So I wouldn't produce something like this, you know, for a uh, literature review in my field, but I think it's kind of nice to have this little abstract. It's like a little too long didn't read, a little executive summary, if you will, of all of the stuff you need to know about. And then introduction, you can see it's all reference. If we click here, we get the reference. And uh, you can also start a conversation with what it's generated. So here's all the documents they found, here's the details, and here's the notes that you can add. So overall, it's a nice sort of like workflow, I think, and then you can start a conversation with all of the stuff that it's generated, explain the methodology, what are the key limitations, and uh, is it perfect? Once again, it's just like text on text. It's really tiny again. Why are they making it so tiny? I have no idea. But um, these are all of the things that you can do here. Here's the Prisma flow diagram. If it's if it's like a systematic review that you're looking for. Um, overall, it's really great. Go try it for free. They have free levels. So INRA is another one you should know about. Oh, gets exciting, doesn't it? And there's one more.
The last one you need to know about is smartresearch-ai.com. This is what it looks like, and you've got all of these bars down here, which you can discover. You've got a library. You've got writer, which, by the way, I tested, and I, yeah, just leave that alone. Um, AI assistant, which is kind of like a little chatbot. Start a new discussion um, about things. But ultimately, this is what I really like about it, is this discover bit. And uh, what are you looking for? Well, you can put in whatever you want, and this is the sort of um, output that it gives you, searching across millions of papers. Yeah, 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 you all do that, don't you? But it gives you this, a list or a little sort of like outline of all of the papers that it's found and the relevance to your topic. You can see that it's found all 37 of the papers in this field. I don't know if it's all 37, but it's a, a great place to start. You can add it to your library, which puts it in this library over here. Um, and you've got a little bit of kind of information about citations, where they found it on semantic scholar and then when you are searching down here you can also say I want semantic scholar archive or open Alex um, so it's another great place to go if you are looking for research and in my experience a lot of these tools are better for some research fields than others so it may be perfect go give them all a little bit of a test and see which ones you like let me know in the comments what your favorite is if you like this video go check out this one where I talk about the top AI tools for academia you'll love it